Hi, Home Choice students. We are getting near the end of the school year, second semester, and so I want to introduce your final project that you're going to be completing over the last two weeks of the semester two. So to start with, I want you to see the um, week 17 assignment page, and here you'll see an introduction to the Modern World Problems Final Research Project. The first thing you're going to do is watch this video, obviously, um, and that is worth 10 points, but you need to do it on Monday of this first week because if you don't do it on Monday, then you're not going to know to finish this proposal by Tuesday at 2 p.m. So it's really important that you keep on track this week and that you finish things in a timely manner. So this video should be finished today, Monday of week 17, and then on Tuesday of week 17, you're going to be doing your final project proposal. And then by the end of the week, you need to turn in your research for the final project. I do have a meeting with you on Thursday, so if you have any additional questions as you're doing your research, I can help you then. So now let's look on the Modern World Problems assignment page. So here you see an overview of the project. And what you're trying to do is you're explaining the causes and effects as well as possible solutions to a modern world problem of your choosing. Pick something that you're interested in, you want to learn about and investigate because this is going to take two weeks of your life. So you might choose something that you actually are interested in looking into more of. So first step is you're going to create a proposal. Um, I have some possible, possible project topics, um, but if you want to do a proposal and you want to um, have some topic that's outside of the ones that I've listed, you need to have everything approved either way, even if you use an approved topic or you create your own, you need to create a proposal. And what that allows me to do is to really see whether or not you have the information and you're not just Googling because we're going to be using sites that are um, through the Grossmont Union High School District Library Service so that you get good research, not just research that's off the internet without any kind of um, filter. So let's look first at the possible project topics. So you're going to click on this page here and it's going to open up and you're going to see possible topics. You also see that to start you'll be going and using issues and controversies database or an EBSCO host that is paid for by the district. So if um, you've never been on either of those things before, you're going to click here where it says, please read the directions on this page to access the link. Since you're at home and not on campus, there is an actual password. Let me show you that, that you're going to have to use to access the research. So here's EBSCOhost, which has a lot of paid for um, magazines and newspapers that you're going to get for free because um, the district pays for it for you. You're going to have to access it outside of school though. So you need to make sure that you're logged into your GUHSD Google account when you click on this database. So that'll get you into EBSCOhost. Now, Issues and Controversies, which is also a really good website for getting overview information. You don't have to get into the two sides of each um, issue, but you can get a good background on some stuff. If you're going to access this one outside of school, you're going to have to use the username GrossmontU and the password Welcome. So just those two sites are the ones that I'm looking at you using the most. Is it possible that you might use Britannica? Yes, um, also you have to be logged into your GUHSD account to be able to do that. But here's all of these sites that are paid for by the district that you have access to. Um, and it also gives you the passwords if necessary. So now let's go back to our topics. Population is a topic, um, Ebola, um, atomic energy, terrorism, refugees, human rights, um, clean water, uh, climate change, genocide, human trafficking, nuclear disarmament, global poverty, and I'm sure there's many, many more. So these are just some ideas. Uh, you can use these or you can venture out on your own, but I would want you to use EBSCOhost or Issues and Controversies site to be able to find the information to actually do the assignment. So then what is the assignment? So the first thing that you're going to need to do is create a proposal. And that proposal will include your name, the topic of interest, the overall topic, and then you're going to actually get an article. 
and you're going to copy and paste that article here um, and then you're going to highlight it and you can use the comments which is up here off to the side to make comments about what in the article you find interesting or important um, so you're going to be highlighting it to help you and then you are going to summarize the article for me in about five sentences so I know that you've read the whole thing and then you're going to use EasyBib to put the bio biographical excuse me, information here. And the way you do that is on add-ons. You should have EasyBib already there. Um, if you don't, um, come to me and I will help you with that. If you don't have it, please just copy and paste the URL uh, for where you got the article from and then we'll come back and do this. But um, EasyBib is very helpful to organizing your bibliography. So you would go to Manage Bibliography it's going to come up here, site source, you're going to pick a website because that's what you use. You're going to enter your URL here and then you're going to search and then once it's done, you should have an actual reference on the side. It'll show up and then you'll put add bibliography to document. You'll add it to the very bottom here and then you're just going to have to move it up to the right spot in this box. So if you need help with that, let me know. And then there'll be a spot for me to write comments to you back um, on this document. So you need to make sure that you use the document that I provided for you on Schoology um, to be able to do this. And then that needs to be turned in by 2 p.m. If I see any problems with the topic you've picked or I feel like you might have a hard time finding information, I will um, get back to you um, by Wednesday so that you're not, maybe even Tuesday afternoon, sorry, so that you're not doing work or research on a topic that I don't think you're gonna be able to do. The biggest thing for this is that it should be a modern world problem. So I don't want it to be a US focused problem. Next year you're gonna be in US history, this year you're in world history, and so we really want something that is affecting the entire world, not just something that's politically based in the United States. So once you've created your proposal, you'll turn that in to me, submit it, I will get back to you, then the next step is to start doing research. So you're going to want to use that EBSCO host website. Notice that for the project topics that I actually, let me go back and show it to you, have connected articles for you already, um, like atomic energy. You can go here and it should show up that there's already stuff set up for you. Let me see if it comes up real quick. So notice part of the assignment is to give background. And so I have linked an article about nuclear power. You actually, what's nice about EBSCOhost is you can read and listen along as it reads it to you. And it gives you all of this background information. Um, it talks about um, how they work. It talks about fusion. Again, a lot of the science and stuff that I'm not that interested in, but I might want to move down and read the parts of it that are important to me, like safety. And notice it mentions Chernobyl, which you might have heard about because the Russia, when Russia invaded the Ukraine, they dug up some spots in Chernobyl that might have uh, exposed the Russian troops to some uh, radiation. So, and then it talks about the future of nuclear power here, and it's got all this information. It's got terms to help you. And then what I love about this is if you use uh, EBSCOhost, you go over here to where it says site, and it's already got the citation set up for you. So it says the AMA version 11, there's two different ways to cite. Um, I'm not too worried about which way you cite it. I find AMA to be the easiest. So you just copy and paste this and you'd have your citation ready to go. So that's kind of nice. Um, so that's some of the resources that I've provided for you. If you go through these links, you're obviously gonna have to have more than just one article, but that's a good starting point for you. So once you've done that and you've uh, filled out your proposal and you've gotten approval, then you're going to go to this notes template and you're going to start your research. Now that first article can be part of your research, but then you're going to need to have at least two more separate articles um, that you're going to do research on. So again, at this point, you, this is worth 50 points, this research, so it's very important. So you're going to name your problem. You're going to start with the, the assignment requires, let me go back to the assignment for a second. The assignment requires you to um, not just tell me about the problem, but there's specific things that you need to talk about. 
So you have to explain the causes and effects and possible solutions, and you must have evidence with proper citations. So if that is the assignment, then your research is going to correspond. So this is a description of the problem. Get details, get numbers, get location. What's happening? So you want your source over here from EasyBib, and then you want, you can bullet point this, but you want specific information that you're gonna be able to put into your essay and into your oral presentation. Causes of the problem, why is this a problem? Get, get an article about the causes. Get an article about the effects of the problem. And then possible solutions for the problem. Again, I'm not asking you to solve the world problems. I'm asking you to look and see what people are trying to do to solve the world problem. If you have your own idea, that's great. But my goal is for you to see what's already happening or being attempted in order to solve the world problem. Again, you're not being asked to solve it yourself. So once you've done your notes, your notes will be due, if we look here, on Friday of the first week. You have to have a minimum of three sources, but I'm encouraging you to have as many as you need. And then you're going to submit your research. When we get to week 18 is when you're going to then start to do the actual um, paper and the slideshow that's going to go with your oral presentation. So as you can see there's two parts to this assignment. So once you get this first week um, which is week 17 done, um, you've got all your research, you're ready to go now, you're going to put it together and you're going to put together a two-page paper and a little presentation which is really just based on your two-page paper and so you're going to give me the information in a nice visual way when I meet you on Thursday of the last week, week 18. And this will be your final project for me so that you will have no separate final um, the week after. You'll be done and I'll just be grading your, these two um, assignments, the presentation and the paper, and that will be your final project assignment grade. So for your paper, you're going to need to turn it in and have it done, obviously, before you do your presentation because, as you'll see, your presentation is based on your paper. So the first thing you're going to do is write up this two-page paper. You want 12-point font. It's double-spaced, one-inch margin, and you can have an additional page for your work cited. And again, the prompt is to describe the modern world problem, explain its causes and effects, and possible solutions, and to use proper citations. You'll then submit it to turnitin.com. I have invited every one of you in this class to turnitin.com. Um, if you have a problem getting on it, uh, we need to sort that out before the last week of school because I will not accept a paper that has not been submitted through turnitin.com. All right, and then your oral presentation, which you will be giving to me on Thursday, May 26th during office hours. There's about 20 of you. It takes probably will take me about five minutes per person for their oral presentation. So just be aware that I'm going to meet with each of you separately. So if you normally come in a group, you will each come to me separately. And you're just going to have, this is going to take a little longer than regular, but this is instead of you coming for a final the next week. So you're going to create a presentation. It should be about three minutes long. Um, where you are going to be sharing essentially a Google Slideshow with me that you've already submitted through Schoology. And you want to have a minimum of 20 images. And I've given you a template. And it'll be on Schoology for you. It looks a little bit like this. Now you're going to put your own pictures in the background, your name, whatever image you want. The title of the page will be the problem or topic of your presentation. Then you want to start with what the problem is. Um, and then you're going to go through some of the causes. And you want some text, but not too dense, maybe some bullet points with some images. So I have two sli three slides for causes, so maybe different reasons. And then you've got three slides, maybe four slides for effects. Again, you decide how many slides you need, but the fewer things you have on the slide, but with more visuals, usually the better for a presentation. And then a couple of slides on solutions and then the last slide for citation. So you have the basic structure here. You can make it look like however you'd like, but that is the setup. So as you can see, the essay is worth 100 points and will be graded using this rubric here, and the presentation is worth 100 points. And there's, so there's a rubric for each of them. These will be linked on Schoology for you so that you can see it. Um, just basic information. And if you don't know how to do some of these things, please talk to me ahead of time. That's why we have our Thursday meetings. Um, or you can email me if you get confused the difference between an in-text citation, which is essentially a, um, 
a, a source in parentheses at the end of a sentence that tells me the last name of the article author that you got the information from. That's in text versus an actual work cited that's at the end of the paper, which gives me all the details. Um, you're gonna, so the format, you've got format, is it formatted correctly, 10 points. You've got, do you have in-text citations, that's five points. Do you have a work cited at the end, that's five points. Do you have your thesis? Do you have quotes or, or paraphrases and content, evidence? Do you have analysis? Um, and how do you use it throughout your essay? So you've got format, 20 points, content is 80, and then um, it looks like I might need to make some changes down here at the bottom because I think I added together, you should have a total of 200 points, not 240. But I'll fix that before you actually end up doing it. But you've got it all here. It kind of tells you the breakdown and um, hopefully it'll all be fixed <laughs> by the time you get to looking at these rubrics. Um, but I wanted you to have the overview. Please make sure you ask me if you have any questions.